What's up guys, it's Victor. Today, we're going to check out my Vizio home theater setup and ultimately decide if this setup is for you. I have a 65 inch Vizio M series Quantum 4K HDR TV model number M65Q7H1 with the Vizio 5.1 V series home theater soundbar model number V51H6. I've been using both of these together for over three months now and I have a couple thoughts about them. Let's start with the TV. This costs $679 at Sam's Club and includes a lot of popular features such as Dolby Vision HDR, Chromecast built-in, HomeKit and Google Supports, AirPlay 2, Variable Refresh Rate for Gaming, HDMI 2.1, and eARC. This TV is mounted on my wall with a Piffy shell, that's a weird name, full motion mounts, I actually wouldn't recommend that you get this because although it technically can move in full motion, it is so hard to do that it ultimately feels safer to just leave it alone in one place. Which makes it more difficult for me since I have all of my hardware hidden behind the TV. Back to the TV though. So do all of these features add up to an overall great experience? Not really. First off, this TV is not as bright or as color popping as I would have hoped. While it can still perform pretty well in some lit rooms, I do prefer to enjoy this TV in the dark. So I actually installed these blackout blinds in order to limit how much light would reflect off the screen for the daytime. For context, I have been enjoying watching movies, TV shows, and gaming on a now decade old Panasonic HD Plasma TV. And for whatever reason, switching to this TV just kind of feels like a downgrade. Maybe it's because I'm not really used to LED panel TVs as I have been very happy with the quality of plasma for so long. But no matter what I do in the TV settings to try to get the colors and or even the contrast to agree, it just seems like the colors on this TV look faded. On top of that, blooming on this TV is pretty bad. That's when you have a relatively dark scene being shown on your TV and a bright image enters into that scene and it draws this white shadowy light all across the screen, essentially killing the blacks and being very distracting. You also won't get a very good viewing experience if you were to look at this TV from any other angle other than just straight forward. I feel like much of these problems stem from the fact that the TV has very few dimming zones, 30 in fact, and that clearly shows whenever you have a dark or grayish screen on the TV, which is also Vizio's home screen color. Interesting. On to gaming. Gaming on this TV has actually not been very bad, besides all of the problems I had just addressed, but you can definitely see that high refresh rate come in for games that take advantage of it. As of currently, none of my consoles support 4K, so everything is just upscaled to the TV itself. At the very least, my PS4 Slim does support HDR10, which does make a slight noticeable difference, especially when playing games like Spider-Man, where you can see the content between the bright and shadowy areas very well. Overall, I like gaming on this TV, which is what I mainly use it for. I play a lot of competitive games on it, and I haven't had many issues as far as screen tearing goes. But once again, I'm not really pushing this TV to its limits yet. I may make a follow-up video on this TV once I get my hands on the new PS5 to see if this TV is future-proof for the next generation of consoles. As far as some of the smart features go on this TV, it's kind of a mixed bag. I mostly watch YouTube videos on this TV which I cast from my iPhone onto the TV and that works pretty reliably. I also love the fact that I can change the volume of the content I'm watching from my phone by using my phone's own volume buttons instead of having to pick up the remotes. However, sometimes when I try to airplay a movie or something to this TV, some weird glitch would occur where the picture would have this purple bar looming around the bottom of the screen and it would overall just disrupt the overall quality and aspect ratio of the content I was watching. So I would have to turn off and turn back on my TV. But now Vizio has added the Apple TV app so I can now watch content straight from there. Now I'll be honest, I hardly watch any content off of the apps on the TV themselves. For the main reason being, I don't like remotes, period. I prefer to just use my phone for everything, so that's why I'm constantly casting and airplaying multiple things to this TV, just so that I can abandon my remote entirely. Thankfully, the Vizio does have a SmartCast app that allows you to control basically all the functions of the TV straight from the app. So I mostly use that instead. 
However, sometimes the app can struggle to connect to the TV or take time to connect to it. I wish that when I opened the app, it would just automatically open to where I can begin controlling it. But I always have to choose the device that I want to control as the SmartCast app can be used to control multiple devices. Now, I mostly got this TV because of HomeKit support, and I'll be going over this feature in more detail in a new video I'm working on that's going to cover the entire smart home and HomeKit ecosystem. So be sure to be subscribed so you don't miss my video on that. And while you're at it, please give this video a like. It really helps out my channel. But anyways, back to what I was saying. This TV does support HomeKit, which does allow Siri to control this smart TV. So I can do things like turn off and on the TV, and include the TV into automations that work away from home. My only complaint is that HomeKit support for this TV is still pretty limited. I would like more control over this TV from the Home app like the SmartCast app allows. And Siri also can't change TV inputs. So if I ever wanted to check back on a different device that was connected on a different input, then I would have to open the Home app and change the setting there. Hopefully they give that capability in the future, but for now, that's what we got to work with. Overall, I think this TV is a good bedroom budget TV for the size and features. My only concern is that at one point, the TV did become unresponsive and I had to unplug and replug the TV in order to get it to function again. But so far, it hasn't done it since. Also, I like the way this TV looked on paper with all of its features, but it delivers them subpar. I mainly bought this TV as it included the features that were important to me as an Apple user and so that the TV itself could facilitate an Apple TV. But I think ultimately I may pick one up for this TV as soon as Apple decides to refresh the 4K Apple TV line. It may be more beneficial to buy a different TV from another budget TV manufacturer from either Hisense or TCL. There is this 4K Hisense TV that I bought from my parents over four years ago, and it has held up nicely over the years, with the exception that the power module within the TV had to be replaced at one point. However, when comparing it to this TV, I do prefer the colors and brightness that the Hisense can produce. One odd thing though, is that even though the Hisense says it can display 4K at 60 Hertz, I found that it is only able to produce it at 30 Hertz. This shouldn't be an issue with some of the newer models, but just something to keep in mind as you look at some of these comparisons. Other than that, I wouldn't replace the Panasonic TV with this Vizio. Now, let's move on to that soundbar. This is a Vizio V-Series 5.1 soundbar, which I bought for $200 at Sam's Club as well. It comes with, of course, the soundbar, two satellite speakers, a wireless five inch subwoofer that the satellite speakers connect to, an optical cable, wall mounts, and the remote. Now, if you want the best sound that you can possibly get with this soundbar, then you must connect this soundbar to your TV using an HDMI cable. Thankfully, my Vizio TV does have an HDMI eARC input, which allows the TV to send the best and compatible audio signal to it. It also allows the TV to control the volume with the same remote as the TV and automatically shut down the soundbar when you turn off the TV. The wireless subwoofer delivers powerful bass and because it is wireless, it makes it easier than ever to connect the wireless speakers to with no dropouts or lag throughout my usage. The wireless speakers are simple, small, and compact enough to not stand out too much. I have them mounted to my wall using these Wally dual speaker mounts, which I bought on Amazon for $9. I wouldn't really recommend getting them for these speakers as the ones I received from Amazon had holes drilled through them and wouldn't actually fit on the speaker unless you turned it upside down. So they actually aren't attached properly, but they do work and that's all that matters to me. However, Vizio does include some simple wall mounts for these speakers, but they don't allow you to turn the speakers at all, so I wouldn't recommend using them. Anyways, this soundbar far exceeded my expectations for a relatively budget surround sound system. For comparison, in the living room, I have a Dolby Atmos surround sound system attached to clip speakers, and in the office room, I have an RCA 5.1 surround sound system that also uses a receiver. The RCA surround sound actually cost more and delivered a far less surround sound experience than this soundbar system has been able to deliver. While it definitely doesn't beat my Dolby Atmos setup, it does have its advantages. 
Its small and compact form factor makes it easier to set up, with far less wiring, configuring, and clutter than a receiver-based surround system would require for a more clean-looking setup. But what's also important here is to establish the context of this surround sound system. I am using this soundbar in my bedroom, which is a lot smaller than the living room and therefore doesn't have to be as loud. And I am sitting much closer to these speakers than I am in the living room, so some things do sound more clearer. I definitely wouldn't use this soundbar to replace a receiver-based surround sound system in a large home theater room, as I have noticed that this soundbar cannot get quite as loud as some of the other systems, and when it does, it starts to peak pretty badly with sound cutting in and out. I've noticed this quite a bit when listening to music pretty loudly or playing rhythm games like Rock Band very loudly. As far as surround sound capability goes, this soundbar only offers up to DTSX Virtual, which claims to offer virtual 3D sound, kind of like Atmos sound. But in my experience, I haven't really noticed that. It may be because my ceiling is relatively high and isn't flat as to allow the audio to easily bounce off the ceiling and into my ears. But regardless, it's there. Other than that, you get DTS and Dolby sound. You also have an auxiliary input, Bluetooth, and auxiliary virtual assistant, which can allow you to pair the soundbar with an Amazon Echo device to stream music through. Obviously, I don't use Alexa in here, but this would be a great buy for those that do. Moving on to the remote. It has a small LCD screen on it which tells you where you are within the soundbar's menu. From here, you can configure your speakers, features, and adjust certain settings like the treble and bass. Sadly, you have to use this remote in order to change these settings. I was hoping that I could connect the soundbar to the SmartCast app, but it is not compatible, which is a bummer. But not a deal breaker. Some pretty interesting features of this soundbar is night mode, which will lower the frequencies of the bass in order to not disturb other people who may be in another room next to you. The soundbar has some built-in EQs, which I switch between regularly. The music, which I of course use for music and direct for everything else. Direct gives you, in my opinion, the best and exact possible sound from the soundbar without any fancy tweaks in order to enhance it. For example, I've noticed that the movie EQ bumps up the bass quite a bit to where it just seems to constantly hum, and that's pretty annoying, so direct all the way. Overall, I can't recommend this soundbar system enough for your bedroom or small living space. I enjoy listening to music off of these a lot, especially when I'm here getting work done or writing this script. The sound truly fills the room and can immerse you in its surround sound experience when watching content off the TV or playing video games. For the price, you really can't go wrong. Now it's time for some final thoughts. I'm really happy overall with this TV and soundbar combination. I have no complaints with the soundbar, although I do wish the TV did perform a bit better in some areas. However, I can't really complain based on the amount I paid for this TV. Sure, there are better options out there, but everything included in this TV does make it a bargain, even if none of the features nail the landing. It does provide some good overall. Like I said before, this TV combination isn't meant to replace your main home theater TV setup, but it is perfect for the small bedroom or living space that you might have. So are you planning on getting this TV and soundbar setup? Let me know in the comments why or why not. And with that, it's time to wrap up this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like this video to help me out and also subscribe for more videos like this one coming out in the future. I'll see you guys in the next one.